Respiratory symptoms such as fever and cough are the classic symptoms of COVID-19. But some people with COVID-19 can experience gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea, nausea and vomiting without any respiratory symptoms. <music> diarrhea is reasonably common and in some studies it's present in one in three people hospitalized with COVID-19. The next most common gastrointestinal symptom reported is nausea, with vomiting the third most common. The US Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, has added diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting to its list of recognized COVID-19 symptoms. Abdominal pain has been reported in studies to be a symptom of COVID-19, although this is considered to be uncommon. Viral RNA has been found in feces, and this does raise the possibility of fecal oral transmission. This prospect is strengthened by the finding of live virus in fecal culture. Most scientists now believe that even if this mode of transmission exists, the likelihood of SARS-CoV-2 being transmitted by feces from one person to another is considered to be very low. Fecal oral transmission, therefore, is not currently considered a major route in the spread of COVID-19. We know that studies have found that some patients can have fecal samples testing positive for SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA many days after their throat swabs have tested negative. This active shedding of virus into feces does not mean, however, that the person is necessarily contagious just because we find the presence of viral nucleic acid. It could be that the virus that's been shed in feces is not live and therefore inactive. The same concept applies when it comes to the detection of viral nucleic acid in sewage. The presence of viral nucleic acid in sewage does not mean that there is definitively an active infection with live virus. It could just be inactive viral fragments. Sewage surveillance programs though are important in the public health response to the pandemic and we should strongly support these measures as an alert for the possibility of a community outbreak. We've often heard about the term long COVID, which is defined as signs and symptoms that develop during or following an infection consistent with COVID-19, continue for more than 12 weeks, and are not explained by an alternative diagnosis. Profound fatigue, for example, is considered to be one of the more common long COVID symptoms. As a gastroenterologist, one of the concerns I have is the prospect of seeing post-infectious irritable bowel syndrome or IBS as a feature of long COVID. That means that patients could have symptoms like diarrhea persisting for many months after being infected. We already know that there are some patients that can develop IBS after a gastrointestinal infection, whether this be bacterial, parasitic or viral. In my previous animation, which you can find up here and also in the description, I covered how the inflammatory damage from COVID-19 in the gut can send signals to the brain, providing a mechanism for how post-infectious IBS might develop and persist. I consider this to be an important issue that we should be alert to. We need to be able to observe and monitor people who have had COVID-19 for possible post-infectious IBS. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below to be a part of the discussion and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.